Uh, his name is Dr. Jack Barlow. Barlow, Jack, forgive me if I mispronounce your name. That's all right. You got the B right, so we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Anyway, Jack is a chairman of the board and the immediate and past president at an International Federation of Chiropractic. It's, uh, you know, we're so grateful. And also, he's the owner at Providence Chiropractic Center. Hi, Dr. Jack. How are you? Uh, I'm great. Let's just focus on you and me, Lamika. All right? You don't mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, Jack. <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll roll. We like Levi a lot. Yes. 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 So I'm sure our viewers would love to know who Dr. Jack is and what inspired you to uh, venture into the career path you're in. Um, so, so, you know, as a Jewish boy, you, you have two choices. You're either going to be an attorney or in a doctor. I mean, that was it. That was the choice I had when I was a young boy. And I knew early on, I didn't want to argue with people. So I said, attorneys out, I'll look at doctor. And so I had envisioned as a very young person becoming a doctor, but specifically a, a, a cosmetic surgeon for disfigured kids. And my hope was to join other doctors traveling all over the world and helping these poor kids that otherwise wouldn't have a choice. Um, and so that was my goal. And life had other other plans for me. So I, I met a girl and uh, early, early in my life and got married early in my life. And she had two children. And so going to, to medical school was not a possibility. And so I just went along and did my life. And I had a lot of great things happen to me. I was a, well, as a graduate student, I got to teach uh, at San Francisco State University and I became a family planning counselor and I worked at Stanford University uh, and I worked in biotech for 10 years. And then I did something really dumb, and that was I went and I bought three restaurants. So anybody who wants to buy restaurants, call me. I'm going to give you my number. It's the hotline. I'm going to talk you off of that because you don't want to do that. But after I did my, my five years in, in, um, in the restaurant business, I said, I, I got to grow up now. I was 39 years old. I said, I got to do something with my life. And so I had had a phenomenal experience in chiropractic. Uh, my, my, my late wife one day woke up unable to move her legs out of nowhere. The night before, it was on New Year's Eve, we're fine, New Year's Day, we wake up, she can't move her legs. So I put her in the car, I took her to the local emergency room and they looked at her, they examined her, they injected her, they medicated her. And by about 3.30 in the afternoon, there was absolutely no change in her progress at all. And they said, that's all we could do, take her home and let's see what time we'll do. So I put her back in the car, took her home. And um, on New Year's Day, I have a habit of always calling my friends and wish them a happy New Year. So I called one of my friends and explained to him what happened. He says, well, call my chiropractor. And I had never been to a chiropractor before. And I said, well, what is a chiropractor going to do that these people couldn't do at the hospital? He says, call him anyway. So I called this guy and the cat answers his phone on New Year's Day. So the first thing I thought is, wacko, there's something wrong with this guy. He needs business. He's answering his phone. What's going on with that? I could hear kids in the background. And I explained to him that one of his patients, my friend, suggested I call him. And he says, bring her in. I'll see you guys at 5.30. I said, all right, tomorrow at 5.30. He says, no, 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 today. I said, but doctor, it's New Year's Day. He says, I understand, but I took an oath. And that stuck with me, back my head for until this day. So I took, put her back in the car, took her to his office. He said what he was going to do. He did what he had to do, and she walked out of there. And I thought, holy smokes, if she's got that type of an issue, I've got all kinds of issues. I don't know if it's a psychologist or not, but i got all kinds of issues. So I started going. We went every Friday until he passed away, knowing that what he was doing with our bodies was enhancing our ability to function in society. And so that was with me in the back of my mind as well. And so when it came time for me to make a career choice, I looked in chiropractic colleges. Unfortunately, in my area, the San Francisco Bay Area, there are two. And so I picked one of them. And as soon as I sat down in those god awful chairs that you sit in for eight hours a day, four years of your life, I said, "This is where I should be." When I was nineteen, not when I was thirty-nine. But nonetheless, I started at thirty-nine. I was the oldest guy in my class, and I graduated the youngest guy in my class because I sucked the youth out of everybody. <laughs> it was awesome. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, that was excellent, man. That's that. That's, that, is, that is an incredible story. Enjoy every every word of it. Thank man, that's you. Great. That's great, Jack. So, man, so that's so that's where your chiropractic journey began. Correct. Uh, but, but again, that's an example of of you're never too old to learn. Ever. Never. Ever. I mean, if, if you came to my house, you'd say, how do I get around all these books? I've got books 
everywhere. And they're books that I refer to often. Um, Because if you're not a perpetual learner, then you become stagnant. And when you become stagnant, you start to regress, you might as well die. And I'm not ready to die. I got a lot more things to do in my life before I pass. And so I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly evolving. Um, I'm constantly developing deeper convictions. And that's what allows me to come up, to wake up every morning, five o'clock, anxious to get to my office. I am so eager to get here. I am grateful to wake up in the morning. First of all, I thank God for allowing me to get up in the morning and for all the blessings that he's bestowed upon me. And then I can't wait to get to this office because I get to go to work. I don't have to work. I get to go to work. Yes. yes. That and that, that excites me. Exactly. Yeah, that excites me just hearing about it. And, and uh, yes, that's, man, man, you, you are there, Jack. So, therefore, you have, I mean, I mean, I receive a lot from you. And, I mean, as well as Lamika do. Uh, you know, okay, can we read your posts and stuff? They're also inspiring, and, and you're always giving back to us all, right? I mean, I think I made a, I made a comment, something like you are a blessing, you know, you know, to this earth because you are such a human. I mean, I mean, so you're so human, and uh, you know, and you always giving back to the people, and yeah. so you know, that's a, that's a, I mean, that's a major investment that any one of us can make in in our services, and so we yeah. definitely appreciate you. You know, you know, in that in that capacity there. Well, thank you. You know, there's a saying I think it comes from the Bible. I'm not sure. I'm I'm a Jewish guy, so I'm Old Testament kind of a guy. But nonetheless, I believe that it says something like to uh, to them who has been given much, much is, is expected in return. And and I don't do things with any expectation of return. I just do things very selfishly because I like to see other people happy. Yes, it's, I could do something to make somebody happy. Then I get some selfish pleasure from that, uh, and that's what I do. I. You know, I, I don't have a choice. It's just, it's in me. That's what I, that's who I'm made from. Excellent. Excellent. Boy. And you know, we're so blessed to be just to, just to know you. And that's, oh. that's a blessing in itself. Yeah. Okay. Cause we're all going to get fed from you. Uh, so, so, so being, so, okay. So you discovered your career path, you know, late, but you was always on that same journey, you know, unknowingly to yourself. Correct. Yes. Yes, it, 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 you know, when you, when you look back over your life, uh, Levi, you, you realize that every decision that you made was relevant and it got you to where you are now. And and so I think when you do that, first of all, you got to take responsibility. And secondly, you take an inventory. Uh, I don't go to bed at night until I've done a personal inventory. And what I do is I look at all the things I did during the day and I ask myself, was this a productive thing or was this a destructive thing? And whatever is productive, I try to enhance. Whatever is destructive, I try to correct so I don't make that mistake again. And every decision, good, bad, or indifferent, has led to where I am today. And so I look back with gratitude for things that happened to me, whether they were good or bad. Because if I hadn't gone through that then, I wouldn't be who I am today. And so I... I, I encourage people to look back, um, even at the, through the most difficult times, because there's great lessons in that. I, I firmly believe that there are no failures, there's only lessons. And so look at what you've gone through. It's either made you stronger or changed your mind about something. But everything you've gone through in life was there for a reason. And the reason was to make you who you are now. Exactly. Exactly. Well said, Jack. That is well said. Yeah. Thank you. Something to you like that. Ed? Well, um, I just, I just think uh, you're phenomenal. I, like Levi said, we just think you're such a great, 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 great person. Oh, and, thank you. But my, but my question to you is, what are, what? I heard a lot of good things. What are the highlights of your career? Yeah, uh, honestly, one of the, the big. In fact, it is not one of the, the biggest highlight in my career is that um, when my son, who's going to be 13 in two weeks, when he was born, uh, my wife wanted to do a home birth and so we we did the home birth and we were progressing really well and, and it, then things kind of stopped and we had a midwife and and uh circumstances dictated that we had to go to the hospital and so we went to the hospital and uh, my wife was admitted in the emergency room and fortunately for us there was a midwife there at the time so our midwife and, and, and this midwife exchanged information and the midwife asked me can i monitor your son because he seems to be in distress. I said, of course you can. I said, you do whatever you have to do to make sure that my wife and my son leave this hospital well. And so she did something, she put a little thing in his skull, and on his scalp, and, and she said, you know, he's in great distress. We're gonna have to call the emergency pediatrician. And I had envisioned having, you know, this home birth and 
you know, angels and trumpets, the background, flower petals everywhere. And it didn't happen. We're in this very sterile room. Uh, it was pretty scary. My wife had no idea what happened. She was in labor and what happened, even though she was fully dilated, what happened is that part of her cervix was caught on our son's head. And every time she pushed out, he got pushed back in. This went on for about six hours. So there was a tremendous amount of stress and pressure put on his neck, which is an important part of our body from a neurological point of view. Um, so when he came out, he came out lifeless. He was white. He was uh, not moving. He was not crying. His eyes, which are beautiful blue green now, were kind of yellow brown. And honestly, he looked to me like a salamander. And he came out and they, she snipped in milk cord. She handed him off to the doctor and we didn't know what to do. We thought it was because maybe, you know, he had aspirated some meconium that they were concerned. Uh, but we didn't know what was going on. So I went to the doctor and the, the concern with, with uh, meconium, the first bowel movement, if they aspirate their lungs, they can cause all kinds of problems. And they were, that was, that, they were afraid of that. And I said, doctor, uh, what's going on? He says, I don't know. We, we don't know. And I said, no, that, that's not an option. What else you got for me? He says, well, he could be here for a long, long time. It depends on, on how much meconium he aspirated. I said, what's the plan? She says, we're going to take him up into the NICU, the neonatal ICU. We'll work on him. We'll call you in a few hours and we'll give you an update. And I said, doctor, before you do that, I would like my wife to hold him for one second because I thought she'll never, she may never hold whatever little life he had in him. And so as I carried him over to her, my chiropractic brain kicked in. I said, he's been doing this for six hours. What must his neck look like? And so I asked my wife to hold him and I gently palpated his neck and determined that he had a misaligned vertebrae putting pressure on his brain stem. So I lightly adjusted it, took him, gave him back to, to the doctor and up they went. And then I got my wife settled in the room and about 45 minutes later, I said, honey, I'll be right back. I'm gonna check on the baby. So I went to the NICU and I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you can look into the room and there's like an ante room and there's a room and you can look through and I, lo I look through, there's a doctor and the nurse standing at the bassinet, but they're not doing anything. And so my first thought was that he died. So I bust into this room, no mask, no gown, no nothing. I said, doctor, what's going on? He says, we don't know, but he's completely normal. His APGAR score is nine plus. You can hear him crying. His color's back. He's breathing on his own. Take him. Yes. So I grabbed that little guy. And I was, as I was walking out to bring him to my wife, I thought, what if the only reason I went to chiropractic college was to deliver that one adjustment? Mm -hmm. And that has convicted me. It's convicted me ever since. He's almost 13. So every morning when I kiss him hello and every night when I kiss him goodnight for bed, I look into his eyes and those eyes remind me what my purpose is. And that is to provide life care for anybody who's open to it. And that's what gets me excited every single day. Thank Boy, you for that. That is a great <laughs> gem. So that, that's my highlight. That's why, I mean, when you could do something like that for your own flesh and blood, you know, Ooh. if I could do it for anybody, and I will. Yes, thank you, thank you. Man, Jack, that is perfect. Man, we appreciate you. Uh, you need, I mean, we appreciate your story. We appreciate, we, we appreciate you a whole lot. Hey, and, uh, you know, you know, we thank you for joining us today, Jack. Anyway, we come to the end and that was a great note to, um, I mean, to end it on. I mean, we was, I'm there with you. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, this is the, this is the great Dr. Jack. Come on. The chiropractor, man. You know, <laughs> look, we love you. Hey, if I had a hat on Jack, I'll take it off to you. <laughs> well, I love you guys and I appreciate the ability to be in your presence. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, Thank you, you, Jack. So we appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. I hope so. Yes, sir. You will. All right. All right. Have a great day. Thanks, you guys. See you later.